You don't wear ties. And I said, that's okay. <laughs> well, let's, let's put it this the way. secret's out. My wife will get a chance to dress me when I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I may have almost anything on at that point yeah. in time. Uh, I happen to know a gentleman that's like 79 years old to split an image of you, and that's my dad. My dad brought me in a couple weeks ago, and he says, okay, I just want to remind you of my will. I'm like, well, I already know about your will. You know, what do you mean? He goes, I will be buried in a pair of blue jeans and a flannel shirt. I'm like, okay, let's make sure. Oh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. <laughs> that means I don't get... It'll give me something to look forward to. Oh, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm not going to put it on you. Yeah, right there. That's sure, sort of nice. Put it, put it up there. Okay. So, it's an honor. Yeah. Well, this, what this is, is I always take the time to recognize folks with... Uh, you know, one, the Corps of Engineers has got 48 different districts, and I'm just one small district in the 48. Your, mm -hmm. your son, Mike, is going to be one here very soon. Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Oddly enough, Mike is going to be one of my students uh, sometime in July, towards the end, or the end of June. He's coming to what's called the pre-command course, oh, and, oh, and I'm that. sort of overseeing all that, so I'll make sure I'm a real hard instructor. <laughs> 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 So as I was saying earlier, this is uh, my distinct pleasure. I'm on, here on behalf of uh, the Chief of Engineers, Lieutenant General Bostic. Uh, he sends his warm regards, and uh, obviously if he could be here, he would be here. He's you know, a very busy man, but honestly, I'm, I'm, when General Bostic and uh, Major General Semnite asked me if I could do this, I absolutely uh, was uh, happy to come down here and recognize you, partially because I know your brother, but also because of your level of service. 19 years in the reserves, uh, from 1991 all the way up until here just recently. And uh, what's more important about that is uh, you are that 1% that this nation always calls for. And that's a warrior 1% that I call it. And you stood up when this nation needed it you and they needed guys like me and Jim to do, go out and do great things. So that uh, speaks a lot, a testament of you and your family in itself. Um, so as I saw, you know, you went into Camp Arizon uh, to support the global war on terrorism, and then you, you went in and you did some uh, uh, combined joint task force consequence management, which I, I know what that is, a lot of people don't. <laughs> I won't go into the details, but it was, uh, it was uh, during some very interesting times in 2001 when we decided to go in and uh, help out in Afghanistan. It just so happens I've, I'm from the special ops community myself, and uh, I knew one of the commanders that was there at the same time you were there. And I was telling your son a little bit earlier, at the time his name was Colonel John Mulholland. Now, most people don't know about Colonel Mulholland, but right now he's a three-star general who is in Special Operations Command. And uh, John Mulholland uh, took the initial Special Operation Forces into uh, Afghanistan. Eventually they went up and did bombing, and then they came down into Bagram, about the same place your son was. Mm -hmm. And so I can imagine some of the stuff that you did during that time uh, supporting our Special Operations Force, because they were truly the ones that were coming in and trying to dissect uh, the Taliban at the time. So that speaks a lot of what you did then. Then, then I heard you left and, and you were able to go to Fort Carson or you worked a job in Fort Carson with the 244th Engineer Battalion. And uh, from what I understand, you ended up commanding there the same time you were, uh, your brother was in the Triple Nickel. It worked out something like that. You were both commanders in the Triple Nickel. The same time. But uh, so you ended up supporting the Triple Nickel Yes, and then you went into Iraq, and what's uh, impressive from another warrior to another warrior is the fact that he did 18 months. I'm sure Jane remembers all of that, because uh, 18 months is extremely hard on families. And uh, so he went in and he did that, and then afterwards you came back, and that's why when I think you and your brother found some time together in the Triple Nickel was during that time. Maybe not together, but the same organization. 
Uh, but me and Jim on the way up was talking about the triple nickel is a very, very decorated engineer. I don't know if you recall your sergeant major, but is he about six foot four? What was his name? Was his name Greg Glenn? Yes. Oh, uh, yes. See, see, bring that smile on your face. <laughs> major Glenn. Oh, yes. Major Glenn. You hear that? So, Sergeant Major Glenn, if you ever see this video, you can see you got a smile on it somewhere. Uh, me and Sergeant Major Glenn, he, when I was a company commander in Bosnia, he was my first sergeant. I still yeah, shiver. Right. When I think of Sergeant Major Glenn. But he was one tough Sergeant Major, wasn't he? he was Everything was major. by the book. Uh, but the great thing about Sergeant Major Glenn, you knew where he was coming from, and he took care of soldiers, all family members and soldiers. So I told you we would eventually find some common ground, General Mulholland and Sergeant Major Glenn. I'm sure if we talk long enough, uh, me and Patrick can find more. Um, it is certainly my pleasure to be here today. Uh, I want to thank you for your 19 years of dedicated service. Uh, before we go into your award, I would like to call your wife up here and uh, give her something. Uh, no, it, it's a little box. Okay. Max. Max. Yeah. I always think it's important that, at least I hope I put it there. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Okay. Anyhow, last couple of weeks ago, I was out in uh, uh, Washington, and there's, you know, there's a big uh, family writing this thing, and so uh, tonight, you know, or today, I was able to give the children something, and so, uh, Charity, I want to pass on something to you. This is personally for my wife, uh, in recognition for your dedication to your husband and the time that he has spent in the military, because we cannot do it without our spouses. So if I don't stick you here, your husband would laugh because then that would, rough, that would mean I give you a pair of the engineer blood, blood, you know, and, I don't want to do that. and then I would probably get shot. But so, without further ado, what I would like to do is uh, issue the orders. Sure. Jane, you can you can stand up here if you uh, uh, charity, if you would please. Okay, Jim, publish your orders. Attention to orders. The Legion of Merit is presented to Major Patrick Farrell, 3rd Brigade, Great Lakes Division, 75th Training Command, for exceptionally meritorious service as an Army Reserve Engineer Officer spanning a 19-year career. Major Patrick Farrell's selfless service and dedication to the nation in times of war and peace are a true testament to his character. His impressive achievements across two deployments to Afghanistan and Iraq include vital engineering support to Special Operations Forces and the 555, the Triple Nickel Engineer Group, respectively, during combat operations. He is an extremely talented and devoted engineer seeking to serve wherever and whenever he was needed. Major Farrell's outstanding achievements and devotion to duty are in keeping with the finest traditions of military service and reflect distinct credit on him, the Engineer Regiment, and the United States Army. Signed this ninth day of April 2013, Lieutenant General Thomas P. Bostic, Commander, United States Army Corps of Engineers. Hold that one around. 